Hi, my name is Dan and I'm a mental health pharmacist and today I will be doing a video about ashwagandha. First I will start with some background information, then I will review some scientific studies that looked at ashwagandha for things like anxiety, memory, physical health, and sexual health, health. and after that I will review my personal experiments in taking ashwagandha for six weeks. I tracked my own anxiety score, I took memory tests, and I did physical challenges every two weeks to see if ashwagandha helped me to improve in any areas. So first I started with baseline tests, then I took an ashwagandha tea that I made from um, the roots for two weeks and retested my scores. Then I made a tea twice a day out of a powdered version of the root for two weeks and retested my scores. And then finally, I tested my scores after taking an ashwagandha capsule for two weeks. So stay tuned to see my personal results in taking ashwagandha. First, I wanted to start with a little bit of a history and a background about ashwagandha. Ashwagandha has been used for thousands of years in traditional Indian medicine practices called Ayurveda. The root is said to smell like a horse, and it's named after the Sanskrit words for horse, ashva, and smell, ganda. Ashwagandha roots were commonly available as a powder that could be mixed with water, ghee, milk, or honey. A paste for external use was sometimes used by crushing the roots with water. The leaves and flowers are also sometimes used in additional treatments. Ashwagandha is an evergreen um, shrub that is native to dry areas, such as areas in India, the Middle East, and even parts of Africa. It is identified as an adaptogen. Adaptogens are theorized to help the body to resist various stressors. Of note, adaptogen is not a scientific term and is not accepted in pharmacological or physiological clinical practice. More studies of adaptogens need to be completed, but whether or not um, ashwagandha is an adaptogen doesn't matter. What matters to see is to see if it helps with various conditions. As for how ashwagandha helps with its various conditions is not completely known. The mechanism of action is related to several purported properties. The roots and berries are what are used traditionally for medicinal purposes. Several active components have been identified, and this includes alkaloids, steroidal lactones, and saponins. The mechanism of the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects is not known. The anxiolytic and anti-stress effects may be related to enhanced serotonergic transmission, GABA mimetic effects, dopamine receptor effects, or corticosterone suppression. Of note, ashwagandha does not contain nicotine, contrary to some reports. Ashwagandha has been used at doses of up to 1,000 mg daily for 12 weeks and is considered safe at doses all the way up to 1,250 mg for as long as 6 months. Ashwagandha has many purported uses. It may have benefits in mental health, physical health, and sexual health. I wanted to start by reviewing some studies, first in regards to mental health, more specific um, in regards to anxiety. First study I wanted to look at was a 60-day randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that compared ashwagandha 240 milligrams with placebo. Ashwagandha supplementation had a statistically significant reduction in an anxiety scale called the HAM-A scale. Ashwagandha decreased cortic um, cortisol levels as well, which is a stress hormone, and increased um, testosterone levels in males additionally. Next, an eight-week trial of 60 participants compared twice-daily ashwagandha 125 milligrams, um, twice-daily ashwagandha 300 milligrams, or twice-daily placebo. A significant reduction in anxiety scores was seen in both ashwagandha groups as compared to placebo. Additionally, again, cortisol levels were decreased in the ashwagandha groups. The final anxiety study that I wanted to look at was a study of 64 patients with chronic stress, and this compared a standardized product of ashwagandha 300 mg twice daily with placebo twice daily. The ashwagandha used in this study was a root extract called KSM66 
from a company called Exorial Biomed. The treatment group had significant decreases in stress scores, serum cortisol levels, and no serious adverse effects were reported in either group. The reason I wanted to bring up the standardized product of the KSM-66 from uh, Ixorial Biomed is because this specific extract is used in many of the trials. So this might be a product that you select if you're looking for a specific ashwagandha product. Next, I wanted to review a study that assessed ashwagandha in regards to memory. So this study was conducted on 50 adults aged 35 or older to evaluate the efficacy of ashwagandha in improving memory and cognitive dysfunction in adults with mild cognitive impairment. Treatment included, again, KSM-66 ashwagandha, 300 milligrams twice daily, or placebo for eight weeks. The treatment group demonstrated greater improvements in executive function, sustained attention, and information processing speed. At eight weeks, memory scores were significantly better in the ashwagandha group as shown by the Weichler Memory Scale 3 scores. Next, I wanted to look at ashwagandha's effect on physical health. So first, I wanted to review an eight-week randomized double-blind study that was conducted in 57 male patients aged 18 to 50. Participants in this study had little experience in resistance training and were provided with a workout program, one year of a free gym membership, and three months of a professional trainer support. The participants either received KSM-66 ashwagandha, 300 milligrams twice daily, or placebo. The results were quite interesting. So the bench, pre the bench press increased by 46 kilograms in the ashwagandha group and 26 kilograms in the placebo group. This increases very large, quite large. But remember, these participants in this study didn't have much gym experience beforehand. The leg extension increased by 14.5 kilograms in the ashwagandha group and 9.8 kilograms in the placebo group. Arm size increased by 8.6 centimeters squared in the ashwagandha group and by 5.3 centimeters squared in the placebo group. Testosterone increased by 96 nanograms in the ashwagandha group and 18 nanograms in the placebo group, and body fat decreased by 3.5% in the ashwagandha group and 1.5% in the placebo group. So this showed quite large improvements in physical health in the ashwagandha group and in the placebo group as well, but even larger in the ashwagandha group. Another trial looking at physical health um, included 50 male or female athletic adults that assessed KSM-66 ashwagandha 300 milligrams twice daily versus placebo in improving cardiorespiratory endurance. Cardiorespiratory endurance was assessed by measuring the oxy oxygen consumption at peak exertion, which they um, monitored by VO2 max during a 20 meter shuttle run test. There was a greater VO2 max increase in the ashwagandha group at 8 weeks and 12 weeks as compared to the placebo group. These two studies show that ashwagandha may have some improvements in not just strength, but also in endurance training. Next, I wanted to review two studies that looked at ashwagandha for sexual health. The first study included 46 male patients with low sperm count and they were divided to either receive KSM-66 ashwagandha, 675 milligrams per day in three divided doses, or placebo in three divided doses. Parameters were gathered at baseline, 60 days, and 90 days. The ashwagandha group had significant improvements. At 90 days, there was a 167% increase in sperm count, a 53% increase in sperm volume, and a 57% increase in sperm motility as compared to minimal change in the placebo group. Additionally, testosterone levels were higher in the ashwagandha group. The next trial looked at ashwagandha for female sexual health. 50 female patients were randomized to receive KSM-66 ashwagandha 300 milligrams twice daily or placebo twice daily for eight weeks. Sexual function was assessed with the female sexual function index um, questionnaire and the female sexual distress scale. 
The ashwagandha group significantly outperformed the placebo group in total scores and domains such as arousal, lubrication, orgasm, and satisfaction. In regards to safety, Natural Medicine's database deems ashwagandha to be possibly safe when used orally and appropriately for short-term use. It has been used in doses of 1,250 milligrams daily for up to six months. Though in pregnancy, ashwagandha is listed as likely unsafe. It has abortifacient effects. Next, I wanted to address the side effects. Ashwagandha is considered generally well tolerated, but side effects are possible. First, I wanted to start with dermatologic side effects. So dermatitis, which is inflammation of the skin, has been reported. Gastrointestinal, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea have been reported as well. Hepatic, there are at least five reports of liver injury with symptoms of jaundice, nausea, abdominal pain, and lethargy. Liver enzymes return to normal within a few months after discontinuation. Ashwagandha additionally has some potential drug-drug interactions. It may interact with diabetes medications. It may increase the risk of hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. It may interact with blood pressure medications and increase the risk for low blood pressure. It may interact with CNS depressants and cause the risk of over sedation. It can interact with immunosuppressants and may decrease the effects of immunosuppressants. And it may interact with thyroid medications and may increase the effects of thyroid medications. I hope that background information was helpful. And now I wanted to break down my personal experiment with ashwagandha. What I wanted to do was test the effects of ashwagandha on anxiety, memory, and physio physical slash cardiovascular health in myself. First, I tested myself at baseline. I wanted to see what my anxiety, memory scores, and physical scores were without any ashwagandha. Then I made an ashwagandha tea out of the raw roots and drank the tea twice daily for two weeks. To make the tea, I chopped a teaspoon of the root into relatively small pieces. I put it into two cups of water and boiled the water for 10 minutes. I then strained out the root pieces and drank the tea. The tea was slightly brown. It had a subtle earthy flavor. It didn't really taste necessarily good or bad, but it was drinkable. Then after two weeks of having the root tea twice daily, I retested my anxiety score, my memory scores, and my physical scores. Next, I made ashwagandha tea from a powdered product twice daily for two more weeks. I made the tea by boiling water and adding it to one teaspoon of the ashwagandha powder. The flavor was less subtle, but still wasn't necessarily bad. The problem that I had is that I couldn't get it all to dissolve, and I tried a few different methods. I could never get it all to dissolve, so the tea was quite gritty, especially at the bottom of the cup, which made it a little bit um, less appetizing to drink. I then retested my anxiety scores, memory scores, and physical scores. Finally, I took the KSM 66 ashwagandha product that I talked about in a lot of the studies. I took 300 milligram capsules twice daily for two weeks. This saved me time from not having to make the tea any longer, but I still took this twice daily. Then I retested my anxiety score, memory scores, and physical scores. You may be wondering what I tested specifically. So let's go into this and the results now. For anxiety, I self-administered an anxiety score or anxiety scale called the Hamilton Anxiety Scale. This is a quick 14 question scale where each question is scored from zero to four. A score, uh, a total score of seven or less is considered no anxiety. Mild anxiety is eight to 14. Moderate is 15 to 23 and severe anxiety is a score of equal to or greater than 24. I administered, I administered the scale at baseline before trying any ashwagandha, then after two weeks of the root tea, then after two weeks of the powder tea, and then after two weeks of taking the capsules. My baseline score was nine, which is considered mild anxiety. After two weeks of the root tea, my score decreased to eight, which is still mild anxiety. After two weeks of the powder 
powder tea, my score decreased to five, which is considered no anxiety. Um, and then my score remained at five after two weeks of the capsule. So by the end of the six weeks, my anxiety score was almost cut in half. For memory, I did two tests. The first test was a simple flip matching game that you probably played as a kid. This was a little more difficult than a typical matching game because I was matching an image to the shadow of the image rather than matching two exact images to each other. I timed how long it took me to complete the task at baseline, after two weeks of the root tea, after two weeks of the powder tea, and after two weeks of the capsule. My baseline time was 116 seconds to complete the task. This slightly worsened after two weeks of the root tea to 127 seconds. Then it took me 126 seconds to complete the task after two weeks of the powder tea, but then greatly improved to 84 seconds after two weeks of the capsule. This was a 28% improvement from baseline. The second memory test that I did was a face memory game developed by the University of Washington. In the game, 10 components of a face is randomized, such as the eyes, nose, hair, chin, and so on. And then when you click ready, the face dis disappears completely, and you have to select between three options for each of the 10 facial features. The maximum score is a 10 out of 10. So I started by randomizing the face, I then looked at the face for 10 seconds and then clicked ready to make the face disappear. And then I saw how many I could match completely. I played the game three times at each stage of the experiment. Each time you can get a maximum score of 10. So since I played the game um, three times, the maximum score was 30. At baseline, my score was an 18 out of 30. After two weeks of the root tea, it improved to 19 out of 30. After two weeks of the powder tea, it improved to 23 out of 30. And then finally, after two weeks of the capsule, it improved to a 25 out of 30, including my only perfect 10 out of 10 score on one of the games. This was a 38% increase from baseline to the final test. Next, I wanted to see if I had any physical improvement from taking ashwagandha. These tests were relatively straightforward. I saw how many push-ups I could do in one minute at baseline and then every two weeks after being on an ashwagandha product. I then saw how many front squats I could do while holding 100 pounds at baseline and then every two weeks while being on an ashwagandha product. <laughs> My baseline number of push-ups was 42 in one minute. After two weeks of the root tea, it was 44. Then after two weeks of the powder tea, it was 48. And then finally, after two weeks of the capsules, it was 50. This was a 19% improvement from baseline. My baseline number of front squats in a minute was 15. After two weeks of the root tea, it was 16. After two weeks of the powdered tea, it was 18. And then after two weeks of the capsule, it was 20. So this at the end from the baseline was a 33% increase. In conclusion, ashwagandha has some evidence to support its use for anxiety, memory, physical performance. I noticed some improvements in some of these areas that I tested, and this may have been related to the ashwagandha, but of note, it is possible that I just got better at the memory and physical tests by practicing them every two weeks. I hope that you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching.